Welcome to another video from the farm. Today we're starting an exciting project. We're putting in our full off-grid power system. If you've watched a couple of my videos before you'll probably know we've already got a few solar panels and I actually have 30 of them in total. I've got them all at the same time. I bought a pallet of them for really really cheap off a of scrap man. And this has enabled us to be basically just saving the money for the inverters and batteries and then we could put the full system in. Now we've always anticipated getting the big system in as we're going to need it for when we're growing our lettuces and our NFT hydroponic systems growing our microgreens and our seedlings all in our little indoor area that we're putting together at the moment. So yeah these solar panels some batteries and some inverters and this bad boy 14 kilowatt generator are going to provide us with very consistent power and to plug these solar panels and the generator all into a system we're going to use a Sunny Boy 7.5 kilowatt inverter which should be able to take two strings of 14 of these on maximum load which should give us pretty decent power all year round apart from obviously cloudy cloudy weather we should still get a trickle feed though but that's what the generator is for on those bad days we're going to be plugging in 10 kilowatt Victron Quattro and 20 kilowatts of BYD lithium batteries right let's just show you where I've begun the shed where we're going to house all these components so because of the Christmas rush I've just been cracking on with this as and when I could some of it in darkness so I haven't really been able to film much of the initial stage of this but what we've got is some concrete fence posts we've got three of them as you can see down the middle there we've got them lengthways along the shed then we've got some six by twos to form the base with three by twos really close together on the top like as you can see here they're about six seven inches apart now we've done that so we've got a really really strong floor to hold the weight of any future batteries we put in here it's going to be about 80 kilos of equipment in here to start with but building this big enough so when we need to we can double it up now as you can see I've also put insulation under the floor so I've got a piece running across a big piece under there and then I've put little pieces in between all of the 3 by 2s to give pretty good insulation in the floor because you're going to need to keep this room fairly warm and above zero at all times otherwise the batteries aren't going to work so probably going to end up having to put a heater in here but we shall see the equipment itself might keep it warm enough if we insulate it right so yeah built the base I've put some 18 mil boards on top of it once I've insulated it and now I've begun framing the back wall so I'm going for 8 foot high because battery uh, cabinets are fairly tall and then the Victron Quattro is fairly tall as well so I want to be able to fit them all on the same wall and give us plenty of head height for overhead lights and whatnot in here as well but if you're not familiar with how to frame a wall it's pretty easy literally work out what size wall you want build the square for the outside then every two feet it doesn't have to be two feet do whatever you want really but two feet sort of construction standard space pieces going upwards like that and then we've also put these on the inside so when you put another one joining this side on the end here you'll have something on the inside to screw boards to or plasterboard whatever you're using now some people would also be putting cross members connecting all these together at the bottom and uh, top third I would say but because of the nature of this being a small shed and we're gonna have a pretty heavy-duty roof on it too we were, miss we we're missing that step out because yeah a waste of wood I feel built plenty of these sheds before and they stay ridiculously strong without the, the, the middle connecting pieces especially when you're slapping OSB board on the outside and on the inside you're basically replacing those struts with the strength of the board connecting all these bits together right then first job on the agenda as I said get this shed going let's I'll stand this back wall up now and then begin framing out the rest of the walls So it's a nice calm day, this wall went up fairly painlessly. This is what I was on about before, as you can see, put a 4x2 like that, which represents the thickness of the next wall, 
and it's still got a piece on the inside to mount a board to. So, got these bits ready. Just need to cut four six foot lengths for the two ends, top and bottom. So this is one of the sides framed up. So you've got a little mark there to position the internal bits of the wall. So yeah, just got to screw a few more of these in and then make another one exactly the same. The handy thing is, now I've got one side, I can spill the other one right on top of it as a nice little template. Change of plan. I've just put this wall up. It's going to be a bit awkward to uh, lift the one off the other. If I do it this way around this way, I can just yeah, lift this one up, as I've done, lift that one up. And we're in. All the sides done. Just the front to frame with a doorway in it. Let's crack on. Here we go, we've got the front door in. It's just an old door frame we had lying around that we got given a while ago. And yeah, four by two is the same for the framing of the front and for the structure of the roof there. That's pretty much done for the roof. Just need to slap some boards on it and a waterproof membrane. And it's done. Then we can put our uh, wildflower turf that we've got coming in a couple of weeks' time. So the next task then is to get all this boarded up all the way around. So we've got the one bottom side done here and then there'll be another board on top and then yeah, same with the other side. Straight boards on this edge I think. That didn't take us too long. Now we've got a fully resembling shed. All we've got left to do is just cut a couple of strips off the spare boards we've got for these edges and above the door there. And then, yeah, a couple of roof boards. We'll get to wrapping this up. We're going to be using the same uh, moisture barrier that I always use on the outside. Sort of a wicking membrane. It allows water to evaporate outwards through it, but it doesn't allow water inwards towards the wood. It's great stuff, got it on all the sheds so far, and it's yeah, works brilliant. Stops any moisture getting inside. Right then, let's put these bits of wood on and get to wrapping. Here we go, as you've seen in other videos, this stuff's fairly painless to go on. You literally staple an edge down, walk it round and staple it on as you go. Easy peasy. Gone and left a bit of a loose edge on here though, as we've got to get the reciprocating saw down this edge and trim the door frame up for the bit of overhang we've got on the boards here but yeah other than that next then get the roof on and start insulating all these walls so we're building basically the same roof as on our little toilet we've got there as you can see it's going to be a flat roof we're just going to put a bit of plastic on the top and then we're going to put another layer of plastic and then our little wildflower turf that we've got coming we're putting that on here and on the toilet and on our egg packing shed right just cut the plastic, get that on, and we'll start the insulation. Bosh. And I've managed to get that roll of 200mm insulation to go a very long way. Because I only needed 100mm, but at the minute at a place called Wix, there is a deal on. So it's £20 for a roll 
of 200 mil. So yeah, I've just split it all in half. And I've got most of it done. I've just got that left to do. And the roof. Happy days. So, we're pretty much there. Just need to get a door on. And then we can look at getting some boards on the inside of here as well. So, inside's all finished, insulated. Got the gaps in the roof done. And then I'm just waiting for Stu to get back to bring the insulation boards to go in the roof, the same as we've put in the floor. And to help me hang this door on the frame because it's very, very heavy. So, yeah, need someone to hold it whilst I do this one. I've also put on the lath all around the outside to put the cladding on. So I think I'm going to start cutting some of that now while I'm waiting for Stu. got it cladded and we've got the door on so we're pretty much ready to go now just got a few bits of board to go on on the inside and then power sheds complete so yeah I think I'll leave this video here as a part one of our power system going in so if you're interested in following it and seeing the solar panels go in the generator get installed and all our bits and pieces that we're putting in the shed then please make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and yeah, check out part two. Right then, till next time, bye bye. Welcome to part two of our off grid power system install. Now, since the last video, I've cracked on and I've boarded the inside of this out and I've got some holes cut ready to put cables through. And that's going to be for the generator cable in, solar power cable in, and then a mains power cable out. Now, I've also started roughing in the trench. The cable's going, we're only going like a foot deep. Doesn't need to be massive. And yeah, I'm just gonna bring it out right in the center of the back of this, right by the hole, so we can run the cables behind the cladding on this back edge and keep it all looking very nice and neat. And this is the cable we're gonna be using. It's a 10 millimeter squared armored cable. So it's got two layers of sort of metal sheathing around four cores in the middle. And we're gonna be using two of the cores to run one string on and then the other two to run the other string on so it'll work out pretty nicely and we'll get all our solar straight into the shed down this one cable so I've just laid the cable in here for you to see how it's going to roughly go as you can see I need to clean the bottom out all the way along here as I've just literally roughed it out chopped out some chunks put it to one side and we've got 120 odd meters of this to go down to where we're going to be putting the solar array so we're getting there, we're about a third of the way done. You can see we've got all past the little pie tunnel done here. Only roughed in, as I say, I've got to come along it and just scoop out the last bit of dirt from the bottom all the way along once we're done. But we've got about sort of 70 metres to go now, all past our pile of fence posts, big blocks, and then we've got our metal and plastic down there, as you can see. Strong wind yesterday has blown all these from the top of there. So, we've got a little bit of a tidy up to do, and then we'll crack on, firing the trench in all the way down here, into the next field. And we're well over two thirds of the way there now. The trench, as you can see down here though, with all this crappy weather we're getting, we're running into a, a bit of an issue in the low spot over here. It's starting to uh, fill up with water. And as you can see here, the low spot over by the drainage ditch, is all flooded. As you can see in there a little bit, the corner of this field, where the gateway is, pretty much floods every time we get a decent heavy rain. There's the old culvert pipe that connects this drain in here. You can just see it roughly in the gap in the, the brambles there. 
had an old clay pipe in it which has collapsed so yeah I'm pretty sure in the next couple of months we're going to be digging out this whole thing connecting the two drainage channels together properly rather than with just an old clay pipe so I'm going to head back under cover get out the rain and begin making the mounts to put our solar panels on now for the mounts all I'm going to do is build some 3x2 bracing to basically make a bit of a frame to support two panels and I'm going to make 14 of those well, this is pretty much one edge of a frame as you can see I've cut a 45 degree angle at the bottom there so when the panels are sitting on this top edge they'll be sitting at 45 degrees so it favours the winter sun more than the summer sun because in the summer obviously you get way too much in the winter you don't really get enough so it's better to have your panels pointed towards where they're going to be in the lowest point of the year basically so here we go, we've got the basic shape of one of the mounts up and running. I'm just going to quickly go over to the panels, put them on, just actually make sure it works before we crack on with the other 13. So I've gone and put one of them together, so you can see what the mount's going to look like. And here we go. It's all that we're having to mount them on, it's literally just got the edge of the 3x2 frame that I was making over there, sat on the edge of the solar panel and then the bottom and top edge will be sat on 3b2s need to put the middle one in here need to put the top one a bit further down and then basically just going to come along with some thin lath and mount a piece of lath that overlaps the top of the wood with this little piece of aluminium here which will lock the solar panels nicely in position on each of the mounts right then let's crack on with the other 13 as you can probably hear the wind's a bit high to be filming properly so I've gone ahead and I've cut quite a few of these uh, 45 degree pieces that I need to cut and then just screwed them into a whole length of 2.4 with one on the bottom on through the top there dead easy to do all I've done is literally let's go over the top of it as you can see that cut the first piece off and I've used this as sort of a little bit of a jig to make the rest of the 45 pieces. Now I've also gone and finished a few more of the sides but I'm running out of wood now on the last piece so yeah same sort of structure as before just got this 1.5 meter length strapping those pieces I've just showed you together. So in the shocking weather yesterday I've cut all of the frame pieces you can see lots of different length bits of wood around and we're all ready to take them down to the bottom field start screwing together the mounts quickly finish the rest of these though just got 10 or so to go these bits got to connect them up and so complete the triangles I'll do that quickly Together. We started carrying over all the solar panels and all the bits. First job though, get this ground membrane, which is four meters wide, all the way to the little pegs I've got in over there, so we can put all of these mounts on this to stop the weeds growing through, so we don't have to maintain around the very edge of it, causing us one more thing to have to do. bits are down here now we've got the ground cover laid out so we won't have to deal with any weeds growing through and blocking the production of power from these panels well, as you can hear the wind is ridiculous so I'm going to try and time-lapse this but I suspect the camera will probably blow over a few, a few times we'll see right then let's crack on putting these mounts together
So here we go. That's all we're going to get done for today. Put any more of this up without having the sandbags ready to go straight on the ends. We're in danger of all this blowing away. And definitely put those panels on. These are going to end up tipping on the back or something which we don't want to happen. So yeah, till tomorrow. And it's a far better day today. So I've had a bit of a change of tactic. I've moved the last two mounts to this end rather than the far end as it raises up a little bit there. Just to keep it flat, I keep it at this end. And I've got some sandbags ready to go on the ends. I've brought the lath over. So let's begin. Let's start mounting all this up. coming along nicely. Just started cutting the bits of lath to go on here. As you can see over there the sun's just dropping behind that cloud so it's going to be dark soon. So I'll probably end up finishing this under torchlight. So I got all the lath finished in the dark last night. Fortunately our drill has a nice little LED light in it when you press the trigger. Stu's just finishing up the last few sandbags to go on now and then we've got to run our cable. And I don't think I'm going to dig this area out because it's still a bit wet. So we'll probably just have an extra couple of feet of slack on it at this top end and then uh, dig this at a later date in the next month or so. Right, let's go and pull the cable out. So I've gone and got the tractor involved for this bit. I've literally just looped a bit of rope around a pole through the middle, jacked it up with a bucket. So we've got some nice free movement on the drum so I can pull this out. Now, as this cable's fairly heavy and I've got a few bends in it, it's turning out to be a fair bit harder to pull through than I'd imagined. I need to pull on this as hard as I can. So yeah, let's crack on, let's get this pulled through. So we've got it all the way down here now. It took the two of us in the end because it got so heavy with the full weight of the cable out. Literally had to have Stu stand in the middle and I pulled the last bit, but we're there. So that's it for this video. Make sure to catch us in the next one if you're enjoying this series on our off-grid system so far when we'll be plugging all this together and starting to wire things together in our power shed. Right then, until next time, bye bye. And welcome to another video from the farm. Today we're finally starting to plug together our 20 kilowatt off-grid system. So we're still waiting for a few bits of equipment to arrive so the first job we're going to do is we're just going to wire this generator straight into a fuse board in here which is going to be our main distribution panel to provide power to the rest of the farm. So the first stage on wiring this up is pretty simple. You've got your positive and negative there which provides all the power from this alternator here. So as we're dealing with quite a lot of power coming out of this generator and out of our solar panels as well, I decided to get the professionals in to come and do this for me. It's also going to be better for the purposes of our warranties and whatnot if it's done by a professional. If you get it signed off by the proper installers and then yeah, all your warranties are definitely covered. So when we get to wiring up the fuse board to the inverter and the batteries in the power shed here, there's a lot of complicated technology that goes into the charge controllers and inverters and the batteries these days. So again, much better professional who knows what they're doing with the system, comes and installs it all correctly and then makes sure that all the programming is set to the right parameters and whatnot. It will save me hours and hours and hours of stress trying to work out how to do it, as well as, yeah, I know it's done right then. So, let's meet the guys. So we've got Rob here, he's just mounting the fuse box on the wall. This is Simon, he's starting to plug together the solar array. And he's the owner of the business that I'm using to install this stuff for me. If you'd like to have a little look at his website, I'll put it in the description below. So the first step, We've got to fix these from when I took the ends off so I could plug it to an immersion heater. I've got to put some extra connectors back on here. 
So we have okay. one of the arrays plugged in and we've got 512 volts coming in. We've just knocked in these ground rods. This one needs to go in a little bit further, but it's almost there. We've got one for the distribution board and one for the generator. So we've got the generator wired into the ground over there. And we've also got another cable running into here through the floor. See, so pops up there, so we've got the ground and then we've got the main power cable coming in into our little fuse box here. Now we've only got a few breakers in at the minute and we've only got a cable that can do about sort of 20 amps on, not the full capacity of the generator, whilst we're waiting for the batteries and stuff to come. Got a couple of plugs wired in though and a little light there. So we're sort of set up, we just need to plug in the batteries and inverters next, but we've got power to get going with anyway. So the guys are back out today, we've got the inverter there and we've got the batteries in, they're just plugging these together now. So we've got the solar inverter mounted, we've got the control box mountings on the wall and we've got the Victron inverter mounted. Now we're just starting to wire in the generator properly and it's going to run into an external plug here that's going to go straight to the fuse board. So if the solar system ever goes down, if this generator ever goes down, can just get one in, whip that plug out and plug the new generator straight in and then we'll have power within hours hopefully. But fingers crossed, this system lasts for years with no problems. So we've got the batteries unboxed, as you can see, each one's rated at 25, so you plug the two together which gives you a 48 volt system. Now we've gone for a slightly different battery than I anticipated before, so combined these are going to be 14 kilowatts. And then we've got another one of these coming in about four months or so. We've had to back order them as, believe it or not, batteries constantly change and the company that makes these, BYD, are constantly improving their systems. So because of that, they have taken the original batteries we were going to get out of production, which means that we couldn't actually get hold of any in the UK because the shipment that was due to arrive to the supplier got cancelled by BYD themselves. And instead, we've got given these ones, which are a bit cheaper because it's less watts than we anticipated. But overall, it's going to be slightly more expensive per watt by the time we get the actual second bank of these in. And here we have the batteries wired in. We've got those also connected to the inverter. Now, in here, we've got some 300 amp fuses to protect the batteries. And then we've gone and got the disconnect from the solar plugged in. And we've got the disconnector from the generator plugged in here. Now, as you can see, the solar is ready to rock and roll. We just need wiring into the actual inverter now with it. So we're pretty much there. We just need to wire up the AC to the distribution board here. And then we can start programming this bad boy. Now, I'm fairly confident that I could have got this SMA inverter all wired in with the solar panels properly with the disconnect and whatnot and then got it wired into here and the same with the batteries really they're all pretty much plug and play with where you've got to put the leads and whatnot but the most complicated bit comes with the actual layout we've got here and this is why, why I wanted the professional help because obviously they've got everything in the right places get it all in the right order installed in the right order and then also they came up with this little configuration here so this plug goes directly into the fuse board for the generator and then this is going to be connected to the inverter so basically we're going to have the generator this plug going take this one out replacing that one with this one and then this plug will then be looped round into the mains board here so in effect this power cable here will be what's providing the main board with all our power in the future. And it also then, as I mentioned before, gives us the redundancy option. If everything packs up, whip these out, get a spare generator delivered, plug it straight in here, and then we've got power again. So, triple redundancies, you can't beat that. So as I said, not much left to wire up in this. Put a wire in the control panel, and then put in a few more breakers. But other than that, the boys are pretty much ready to rock and roll and start programming this all together. Now, this is the main reason why I got people in to do this bit for me, is because it's 
complex if you don't know what you're doing to get this to talk to this and this to talk to this and vice versa get this to then talk to my generator outside and then also be able to auto start the generator now and i probably could have worked all this out but it would have taken me a lot longer than these guys as yeah they know exactly what they're doing so it's sort of pretty much plug and play for them and makes my life a hell of a lot easier and less stressful because they're sorting it all out okay then i'll leave them to it now and we'll come back when Simon's doing a bit of programming. We'll show you roughly what it's about. Okay then, everything's plugged in, wired in, and pretty much all the programming's done too. So we've got 700 watts of solar coming in from this bad boy. And then this represents the generator, and we've just got one more little thing to add on in this corner, which is gonna represent this. We just can't quite get it all plugged in yet because the Sunny Boy website is down for us to up for to download the update so yeah I'm stuck with it like this at the minute but you can quite clearly see we've got power coming in the batteries are charging and yeah inverters on and we can just switch the plug on over here and in a second we should see this kick into AC out there we go there we go happy days now, as you can see now we're drawing off the batteries no longer going in, but we're up and running. Off-grid solar complete. So now we've got this all wired in and the control point here is wired in. We can basically adjust everything from here. We can see all the different parts of the system. Yeah, it's going to work out nicely just with this little color control box to monitor everything and then adjust things as we get, as we go. Right then, I think we'll end this part three in the series here. So if you've been enjoying watching, please make sure to give the video a like. And if you're not a subscriber already, don't forget to do so. Help support the channel. Right then, until next time, bye-bye.